Note, before this video begins, I would like to point out that every time I say Shazam, I do not mean the wizard. I do, in fact, mean Captain Marvel. I only say Shazam because it's easier, and also because I do not want to confuse this guy with this girl. Hey, kids. Tired of bullies picking on you at school? Are you too small and weak to feel good about yourself at the gym? Can you just not impress anyone with your small, flabby muscles? Then you need Shazam. This amazing word will instantly turn your noodle side dish arms into the main beef dish. Just look at this happy customer. To order Shazam, you must be 12 years old exactly and have a pure heart and be nice to creepy homeless guys. Side effects may include having a fight Superman and being attacked by arch nemesis Black Adam. Buy yours today. Okay, so if it isn't obvious yet, today we're talking about the Greek Marvel Shazam. This hero, in my opinion, is one of DC's better heroes. He has near strength of Superman, flies about as fast, shoots lightning instead of lasers from his eyes, and this guy got his powers from being a good person worthy of them, not from a different star system. And wow, I just realized how similar he is to Thor. So basically, Shazam is just a Greek version of Thor. And Greece was better than Norse, so... Well, that doesn't matter. Let's get right into this. The first thing I would like to do is look at Shazam's initial transformation. In this, he goes from a 125-pound 12-year-old kid to a 250-pound Justice Leaguer. Now, since Billy Batson as a kid has no special powers, he is completely able to be severely injured from whatever pleases to injure him including lightning. So a kid getting struck by lightning is not the best way to maintain a healthy lifestyle, and would most likely result in the death of poor Billy. Hey, but we can't just say that, right? I mean, he could survive, and ending there would be a pretty short video anyway. Now let's look at all the ways he could be killed by this lightning bolt. And because he is struck with this bolt as Billy Batson, there's no special immunities that would allow him to live. The first thing to check out is that he gains 125 pounds, doubling his mass. Now there must be a way to transfer all this extra mass to Billy. If only there was some sort of beam from the heavens that could bring this kind of mass to him. You see where I'm going with this? Let's just take heat generated by friction out of this equation, because I doubt there will be significant to the insane meteor impact we will see. Billy Batson has a mass of about 56.7 kilograms, so this is the same amount of mass that is hitting him. It is moving at 93,000 miles per second and has a lasting impact of 50 microseconds. And what does this all mean? It means that the lightning bolt would carry out 34,613.5 megatons of force. That's almost 700 times the force of the most powerful nuclear bomb ever created. Scientists have concluded that about 100 of these bombs would have enough to destroy the world. And this has a force of 700 of them. So, yeah. Along with Billy, we are all dead. Man, now I feel like a combi getting hit with a power trick shuckle after three iron defenses with two helping hands from Cherims in a triple battle, with a rollout on the fifth hit being critical. Only a few of you will understand the true devastation that would be brought about from all this, and I salute anyone who gets it. Now the next thing to look out about the lightning is how it gets to Billy. So far, the only way we have been able to make lightning travel at a perfectly straight line every time is to guide it with a plasma beam. Now that means that before Billy is struck by lightning, he gets doused in plasma. Great. Well, enough about the lightning. What about the actual hero himself? Well, as mentioned earlier, Shazam has very similar powers to Superman in terms of physical abilities. So to avoid rehashing ourselves, check out Superman Part 1 here, and Part 2 here. The best way for Shazam to generate lightning would be for him to create a static shock that would travel through the air, and without the use of any kind of mystical force, this seems the most logical way to do it. First, you would have to build up the charge, next he would have to send the electricity through the air at his opponents. To build up charge, he would have to grab electricity out of the air. This would best be possible through an invention by a man with the name of Galembeck. Doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, huh? Well, he figured out that a way to capture electricity from the air and possibly store it. I'm not going to go into full detail, but if you want more information, you can click on this link. Now we need a way to make the electricity travel through the air. The most efficient way of doing this would be for Shazam to discharge the ions in the air, allowing for electricity to move through the vacuum-like environment, with little to no resistance. Though that would be impossible, as no one can manipulate the world around them. And I know what you're thinking, and probably have been thinking this throughout the entire video. But superhero science! He's magic! Well, guess what? Magic isn't real. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's look at a more plausible solution. 
As stated before, lightning can be guided through plasma, so if you had a storage tank of this stuff, then you would actually, in theory, be able to shoot plasma, and that means so can you. Yes, hypothetically, you could be the next Shazam. This is just a brief overview of some of the new tech we have today that would allow this. Comment if you are interested, and I can fully explain how you, and by you I mean Bill Gates because he's the only one with the money to afford all this stuff, could be the next Shazam. So remember, whether he's getting doused in plasma or bringing the human race to an end dinosaur style, he will still never get the credibility he deserves over Superman. That's it for this episode, and before we go, I would like to say something. It's obvious that we have supporters, and you guys really enjoy our content and give us a lot of positive feedback, and that means a lot to us. But for now, the view count is kind of low, and making these episodes isn't easy or free. So share with a friend, not only for our benefit, but more views means more dedication, and more dedication means more content and videos, and more content and videos means that you guys are happier, and in the end, that's all that matters. So share this link, and help us help you. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and remember to leave a comment on what superhero you would like to see perform in the real world next. We're the Superhero Scientists, signing off. This is Billy Batson, star reporter for station WIZZ-TV. He has been picked by the aged wizard Shazam to carry on the wizard's lifelong crusade against crime and the forces of evil. When Billy speaks the wizard's name, Shazam! Billy becomes Captain Marvel, mighty champion, combining the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules, the stamina of Atlas, the power of Zeus, the courage of Achilles, and the speed of Mercury. Billy's twin sister, Mary Batson, has also been granted special power. When she speaks the name... Shazam! Mary Batson becomes Mary Marvel, blending the grace of Selena with the best qualities of other goddesses, whose names combined form the word Shazam. The third member of the mighty trio is their friend, playing newsboy, Freddie Freeman, when he speaks the name of his idol, Captain Marvel! Freddie becomes the powerful Captain Marvel Jr. Together, they are the mighty Marvels, dedicated to fighting the forces of evil throughout the universe.